extremely humbled and honored by your words, Dr. Miller Holst, and I am extremely excited to be here. And I hope that something I say either resonates with you, uh, maybe tick you off just a little bit so it can get you to think about something, get you to act, or get you to ponder. But celebrating African American History Month, and I call it Black History Month, is really celebrating the struggle. And so it is very important as we look at the theme, Lift Every Voice, that we talk about the struggle, which sometimes is an uncomfortable conversation. But I will try my best to keep it light. Mm -hmm. But this is what I ask of you. Be real. Now in the African American tradition, when you agree with something, you say, yes. Amen. Yes. yes. Say so. Say something it. to let me know I am on the right path. <laughs> well, now, first of all, let me let you know I am not a preacher. Amen. I am not a pastor. I am not a minister. But I do have a lot to say. And I promise that I will keep my comments short so that you may continue on with your day. So let me begin with a quote by James Weldon Johnson, and it says, I pledge to myself, which I have endeavored to keep, I will not allow one prejudiced person, or one billion, or one hundred billion, to blight my life. I will not let prejudice or any of its intended humiliations or injustices Bury down to spiritual defeat. My inner life is mine, and I shall defend and maintain its integrity against all powers of hell. It was 1900, exactly, and young James Weldon Johnson, he was a school principal, a lawyer, a writer, and a poet. You see, he had a program to celebrate Abraham Lincoln's birthday, and he needed something for the children to recite. So he wrote this poem, and then he checked in with his brother, who happened to write music. Mm. So Rosamond and James got together, and they created what is internationally known as the what? National Black Anthem. Now, 113 years later, this song is sang to honor a heritage. It's sang as a national song of the NAACP. It's sang at churches. It's sang at national events. It's sang at Black History Month programs. But most of all, it's simply known as the first few words of the song. Lift every voice and sing. And when I thought about today's event, theme, which is lift every voice, I took time to reflect about what life was like during the late 1800s and 1900s, and what experiences and life lessons had James Walton Johnson learned that would give him creative wherewithal to write such powerful words to describe a tormented past. Yet, a bright future ahead. What visions, what, what dreams did James have in order to allow a Negro man, a Negro woman, and a Negro child to connect with his heard words, being mindful of their current situation, but looking forward to a better day? I thought about the Jim Crow laws. I thought about Plessy versus Ferguson. I thought about poverty. I thought about segregation. And I thought about those who had lost their lives to lynching, to peaceful protest, to exercising their rights to vote. And I can see James writing that poem, Stony, the road we trod, bitter the chastening rod, felt in the days we hope unborn had died. Yet with a steady beat, have not our weary feet come to the place where our fathers have died. I thought about the collective history of the African American, the march on Washington, the desegregation of schools, the election of our first black mayor, our first black governor, our first black congressman, our first black senator, and now, yes, our first black president. And I could see James writing, sing a song, full of the faith that the dark past has taught us, sing a song. Full of the hope that 
the present has brought us facing a rising sun of our new day begun. Let us march on till victory is won. 113 years later. What does this all mean? Now for those who marched and protested, for those who fought and died, yes, they can tell us what this means. For those of us whose mothers and fathers and grandparents and aunts and uncles and cousins and friends on the corners, the sharecroppers, the servants who lived during the late 1800s and early 1900s, yes, they can tell us what it means. But in 2013, 113 years later, do our young people really know what it means? Do we as educators, keepers of the flames, parents, civic leaders, do we really know what it means? You see, James' words spoke to the issues of his day, and 113 years later, they speak to the issues of our day. But can we really hear it? When inner cities like Chicago have become a war zone and young black, Latino, and African American children are the target, can we really hear it? When major catastrophes occur across this nation and political maneuvering overshadows the help that they really need, can we really hear it? When cultures are marginalized because uh, they're profiled and targeted, all because they call God by a different name. Can we really hear it? When people are judged by everything but the content of their character, can we really hear it? In some respects, it's like we have lost our voices. So today, I will simply encourage you to lift up your voice. Martin Luther King Jr. said two very important things. He said, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about the things that matter. And he also said this, the time is always right to do the right thing. Amen. So that we no longer can be bystanders and spectators on this parade of life. We collectively have talents and abilities towards a, uh, abilities that can move our communities, our country, and Paradise Valley towards a future that is more inclusive, more accepting, more respectful of cultures and creeds. We collectively have the responsibility to ensure that our young people understand the history of this nation, good or bad, so that it does not repeat itself. We collectively have the opportunity to create a culture of giving, a culture of understanding, a culture that celebrates and embraces the contributions of every race. Now, you see, none of this takes a movement. We don't need a television series. We don't need a new political leader, and we certainly don't need a celebrity endorsement. It takes each one of us deciding that we won't be silent. That instead of looking at a person of another race, race and bow our head so that we don't have to say anything to them, lift our heads and just say, hello. Instead of making assumptions about one another, take the time to communicate and learn to value difference. That instead of saying, that's not my fault. That's not my problem. That will step up, will be present, and that will support various causes. We collectively can begin to form a more perfect multicultural community. It is important that cultures be celebrated and honored for their contributions to the greatness of our nation. But my friends, this must begin in our homes. You see, it is very easy to put on a facade to be fake and pretend that you appreciate diversity. Let me say that one more time. It is easy to put on a mask and pretend to appreciate diversity, but in the comfort of our homes, we are silent and resigned. This silent and resignation breeds ignorance 
in our children. And they become like robot racists on the playground, spewing what they've heard, not knowing what they say, and not knowing the impact of what they have said. We collectively must educate and teach our children not only about the rich heritage that they come from, but the rich heritage of other children. We collectively must move our thought from celebrating Black History Month, Native American Month, Asian American Month, Latino Month, only one month out of the year. Because I'm sure that many of you will agree, you live your life, you live your life in your culture, you live your life in your race 365 days a year. And I am sure that I know that my African American experience cannot be contained into one month Amen. of service. We collectively must celebrate our American experience because it is an experience that is interwoven, mm -hmm. not segmented. Mm -hmm. Lift every voice, not just the loudest voice, or the most obnoxious voice, <laughs> or the voice that sounds the best, but every voice. See, John Wilton Johnson articulates the struggle, the pain, and the anguish of the people. That struggle was to make sure that in the future, we'd have a say. Mm -hmm. 